Hello, welcome ladies and gentle folk to the now annual PC Games and Hardware Awards. I'm your host Dave. And I'm your co-host Jacob. Sub-host. Okay, whatever that is. This is a look back at the best gear of 2017. So this has been an unprecedented bumper year for tech, with more processors hitting the test bench than we've ever seen before. Thankfully, it's been a bit of a lightweight year for graphics cards, which brings us on to our first category, Best Graphics Card of the Year. There was only ever going to be one winner for the Best Graphics Card of the Year, at least there was once AMD had released their overpriced and underpowered RX Vega. Seriously, Nvidia were the only ones pleased about the performance of that card. Nvidia's own GTX 1080 Ti was launched back in March at the Game Developers Conference, and that's where they managed to convince a whole room of journalists that $700 was a bargain price for a graphics card. And that was because they'd basically taken the full fat Titan X, pulled the black shroud off, stuck a silver one on, and slashed the price almost in half. And they bumped up the clock speeds too to give the GTX 1080 Ti the performance leading game. It was the fastest graphics card for gamers when it launched, only being bested by Nvidia's $1,200 Titan XP and their new Titan V. Realistically, only Volta and their next architecture is going to be the one to beat it. Yeah, so well done Team Green. Don't feel too bad for AMD just yet, because they've picked up the win for the best gaming CPU of 2017. Yeah, AMD launched a slew of brand new processors this year, and while the Ryzen 5 1600X isn't the fastest, the cheapest, or the one with the most cores, it's still the best overall gaming silicon that we'd recommend dropping into your rig. It, with its 6 cores, 12 threads, and 4 GHz clock speed, it's ready to chomp down on any computational workload you throw at it, or when you're gaming your little heart out. Overall, Intel has still got the top chips when it comes to the single-threaded performance necessary for high-speed gaming, but realistically, the delta between AMD and Intel has dropped to almost negligible levels. When the 1600X costs just a touch over $200, and the motherboard platform is guaranteed till 2020, it's tough to argue against for a modern-day gaming rig. There have been a couple of truly memorable gaming laptops released this year, from the utterly ridiculous monstrosity that was Acer's 21-inch 21X, to the flawed beauty of Asus Zephyrus. But none have quite caught our imagination like Gigabyte's Aero 15. Forget Nvidia's Max-Q design, they've managed to stuff a full GTX 1066 Gigabyte into a 14-inch chassis, and they've accompanied that with an i7 CPU and a 15-inch screen. Sorry, what? Yep, they've managed to put a 15-inch screen into a 14-inch chassis, because there's almost no bezel on the 1080p MVA panel they've used, they've managed to squish it into the 14-inch chassis they used on the Aero 14. The only problem is it costs nigh on two grand, and then over two grand if you want to go for the GTX 1070 toting Max-Q design. Seriously, even if you put an AMD bulldozer build into that bulbous in-wind chassis, we'd still be drooling over it. Yeah, we first saw it at Computex in Taipei this year and fell instantly in love. It's kind of like some in-wind designer who've been playing too much Fallout and watching Barbarella on loop. And it's gesture controlled when you want to open that lid up. But sadly, it's only for demo and display purposes only. But seriously, Mr. System Builder, if you want to get our attention, stick it in one of these. And not one of these. If you want to know whether that peripheral you're using is designed for gaming, then all you need to do is look for the Telltale RGB LEDs. And if you want to know how powerful your rig is, then all you need to do is look for the RGB LEDs. Yeah, honestly, they're everywhere now. Creative even stuck RGB LEDs and even an RGB controller on their latest sound card. A sound card. But we'll forgive them because they put an RGB LED strip in there as well to make your rig go faster. But what we can't forgive, however, is Razer with their base station Chroma. It's a $60 headphone stand with a USB hub in it. Yeah, seriously, those RGB LEDs are absolutely vital there, right? We giveth and we taketh away, but don't worry Razer, it all evens out. For all the super-powered, supercomputer GPUs, mega-tasking CPUs and stunning laptops, the best new kit we've seen has been finished in soothing black leather and comes free with a gaming keyboard. The Razer Black Widow Chroma V2 Tournament Edition's wrist rest is a thing of RSI salving beauty. It's the most plush wrist rest we've ever had in front of our gaming keyboards, and it makes it feel like your paws are floating on air through gaming or typing. Sometimes the best hardware can be the most simple, and this wonderful little keyboard accoutrement deserves to be copied mercilessly by every keyboard manufacturer in the land, until we're all sitting with padded cushions of joy in front of our keyboards. It's a two-way tie for the launch least likely to furnish you with product, with Intel's Coffee Lake and AMD's RX Vega both managing to get review units out to the media, but very few into the hands of gamers. Yeah, the gaming Vega cards came first, with the launch GPU selling out in a matter of hours. And then the hard-to-come-by Vegas were rising and rising in price as nefarious retailers sought to cash in on the supply-demand debacle. And then we had AMD stuttering about launch pricing and retail pricing. Intel launched their Coffee Lake CPUs a few months later, to much fanfare, but because of their Ryzen-fearing early release, very few actual processors were in the hands of gamers. 
Yeah, we got some review units and they deliver mighty fine six core gaming. But because we got three CPUs, three hardware retailers had their stock halved. You'll still struggle to find an Intel Coffee Lake CPU or an AMD RX Vega card at their original retail pricing, so they both get a tie for this award. Spare a thought for the motherboard manufacturers, won't you? They've had a tough time this year with all the processor releases. Poor things, all that extra cash from these early adopters, boo hoo. But every single launch post Ryzen was pulled in and released early. That meant the motherboard manufacturers had to rush through their testing and validation processes in order to meet the demand which in turn meant they got all the blame for boards not playing nicely off the bat with new CPU designs. Though they were partly architects of their own demise, however, especially when it came to Ryzen. Early samples of Ryzen were none too promising, so motherboard manufacturers didn't put out that much stock, which was a decision they had to reverse when the final performance figures came out. Oops. There was only one winner here. AMD have shaken up the PC market like no one else has for a decade at least. They completed an unbelievable release schedule this year, which included a brand new processor architecture on a new process node with a whole host of new chipsets. Then they also released a bunch of mega core CPUs, which gave Intel's high-end desktop parts a good kicking. Not only that, but they managed to release 500 series refreshed graphics cards and a whole new graphics card architecture too. Okay, so maybe the graphics side of things weren't as exciting as they could have been, but they still managed to release a whole load of product in 2017. Much of it pretty darn good too. They also gave their Intel rivals a huge kick in the pants, forcing them to respond in ways that they were not used to. Yeah, after the Ryzen launch, Intel pulled in every single CPU launch they had planned for the year, culminating in the entirely papery launch of Coffee Lake, which in turn also rendered obsolete quite a lot of their Skylake X CPUs, which had launched only a couple of months earlier. Well done, AMD. So that's our pick of the best hardware that came out in 2017. And it's not going to stop there, because 2018 is setting up to be even better, with even more high-performance gaming gear from refresh CPUs, brand new graphics cards, HDR screens, and who knows what else. Thanks for watching, and if you've liked what you've seen, give us the old like and subscribe, and check back on Ye Old website for more hardware and gaming goodness. Love you!